a few key points about how you approach this. Um, firstly, if you're not sure what you need to do, the information about the assignment is on the last page of the subject outline. I've had some students ask me which year financial reports they should use. Look, most companies in Australia have 30th of June financial year ends. Um, so, and given how long it takes to present financial reports, many companies will not have the 2017 financial reports. Uh, they might if they had different year ends, say, like, like um, March or even December 2016. Well, they would have 2016. So if you don't have a 2017 report, use the 2016 financial report. Now, the key deliverables, the things that you need to answer in your assignment are listed there in the subject outline. I want to make one very important point. This is an accounting subject. When we're talking about accounting policies or accounting strategies, <clears throat> we are not talking about things like saving money or expanding. Those are business policies, business strategies. We want you to talk about the accounting choices that companies make. Right. So it's important to focus on the accounting. Um, one other point. I know that some people break up this assignment and one person does part two, another person does part three, another person does part four. That does not work. You must all work on every part. Why doesn't it work? You cannot do three unless you have done two. You cannot talk about flexibility in key accounting policies unless you have first identified what those accounting policies are. And similarly, you can't do four unless you do three. You can't talk about accounting strategies for each accounting policy unless you understand the flexibility for each accounting policy. Okay, so it's important that you think about these things together. Um, bear in mind that on this slide I have made points 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 bold and the others non-bold. There's a reason for this. We're going to focus primarily on these, mainly because one is pretty basic, it's easy to describe what the company's business does, what its activities are. Um, item seven, undoing distortions, is hard. It's not always possible to work out how, or you might think that numbers are distorted, but it's hard to work out what the numbers would look like if the information was presented using different accounting choices. So that's a bit hard. I mean, if you, if you can do that, great. It'll make us love you more. Um, but we're not expecting it. Uh, of course, you do it, but but it's going to be hard to do, um, and it will be hard to be successful in there. So don't worry, we're not going to put too many marks on seven. We're going to focus on two, three, four, five, and six. Lastly, you summarize any financial press discussion. We want you to do that, of course, but the purpose there is to get you actually looking at the financial press. Okay. Um, so length. You know that you're limited, oh, sorry, there's a typo there. You know that you're limited to six pages. That's your word limit. Um, but anything that you present in table format doesn't count towards the page limit. So, you know, don't waste your words talking about numbers unless you have a point to make. Um, you can do calculations or you can show things in tables and that doesn't use up valuable words. Now, you have to follow the instructions. So you're required to give us the financial reports and relevant footnotes to those financial reports. You will get a penalty if you don't accompany your, if your report isn't accompanied by a copy of the financial statements and a copy of any notes that you refer to in the financial statements. When marking your case study, we don't want to have to go on, online to look at all these financial reports. We want to have the information there. Um, if you go over six pages, of course, excluding the tables and stuff, um, then there will be a penalty. If you don't format your text using 1.5 line spacing, there will be a penalty. And even though there's no penalty for us, this really annoys us, please use standard English, not American English. So set your default language in Word or whatever your word processor is, English UK or English British. Please do not use English American. Blech. Uh, so the case study timeline, the presentations will be at the start of week 12 classes. 
before you present you need to give a paper version of the assignment to your lecturer so they have something to look at you will have five minutes to present all members of the group should be there but of course not all members need to speak you've only got five minutes um, I strongly recommend you do not have more than two people present unless you practice it to make sure everybody spends ex the exact right number of seconds five minutes is not a long time within one day of your presentation you will need to submit an electronic version of your case study to turn it in the link is on UTS online we will randomly check those to make sure they agree with the paper copy so if your paper copy doesn't agree with the one you electronically submitted that's academic fraud and that will result in a zero um, one more thing I've already made this comment a few times your groups a group can be broken up by the majority any time up to the 7th of October okay this is meant to be an incentive to cause every member of the group to participate if you are not participating in your groups work then on the 7th of October you may find yourself without a group and without an assignment so please make sure you participate in your group work